So somebody asked about OCT in haplodema. And normally we don't need an OCT to tell if you have haplodema because we can tell. And the ones we don't need it for are the higher Friesen grades. So in the Friesen scale, we have a C-shaped halo uh, in grade one of nerve fiber layer elevation. If it goes 360 degrees around, we call that a grade two on the Friesen scale. And then you start getting obscuration of the nerve fiber layer. So it starts to block the blood vessel. And so if there's obscuration of the blood vessel as it's crossing the margin, that is gonna be a grade three. It has to be a major vessel, however. And by the time you start getting to grade four, you have obscuration of the central vessels uh, in a grade four. And then grade five is like a champagne cork popping out of the eye. So for OCT, you really probably don't even need it for grade three or grade four. If you're going to be using OCT for nerve fiber layer in these iffy ones, like grade one versus no disc edema, or even grade two, what we're looking for is an increase in the nerve fiber layer thickness, in the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness. And so uh, 100 microns plus or minus 10 is kind of the number we use for the thickness map on our spectralis Humphrey. However, really what you should be looking for is not thickness alone, but obligatory signs of increase in intracranial pressure. That's hemorrhage, exudate, and subretinal fluid. So if the OCT shows the subretinal fluid, well, that's true disc edema. If the ophthalmoscopic findings show the hemorrhage or the exudate or the subretinal fluid, then these are obligatory signs that we're dealing with true disc edema. So when we do the line scan through the disc, we're gonna be seeing the cup and if the patient has disc edema, it'll be elevated like this. And we'd like to know if the elevation is in the nerve fiber layer. And we're gonna be looking at subretinal fluid, which will be like a triangle here. If there's subretinal fluid underneath the swollen disc, well, that's pretty much real disc edema. However, when patients have drusen, pseudopapilledema, they have hypoechoic core with a hyperreflective rim on the uh, OCT. And at the margin, there might be a FOMS a peripapillary hyperreflective ovoid mass-like structure. Please don't use the FOMS to differentiate pseudo from true disc edema. The way we are differentiating these things is real thickening in the nerve fiber layer. And if the swelling is from the fluid pushing on the back of the eye, you'll get flattening of the globe. And that fluid in the sheath can be seen radiographically on ultrasound. But on OCT, you can't see that. But what it does is it deforms the Brooks membrane opening so that the fluid is pushing in versus drusen uh, causes the membrane opening to go out. And if we see the hyper, hypoechoic core with the hyperreflective rim, no subretinal fluid and no thickening of the nerve fiber layer, that's gonna be the pseudo papilledema. If we see subretinal fluid or thickening of the nerve fiber layer, obscuration of the nerve fiber layer, heart exudate, hemorrhage, subretinal fluid, then you're gonna be using the freezing grade to try and determine whether it's one, two, three, or four. In my experience, the grade one, the OCT is usually iffy. The ophthalmoscopic exam is usually iffy and they don't, they don't help. So in those cases, you might have to do fluorescent angiogram rather than OCT to look for leakage of the discus. If it's pseudopapilledema, ultrasound, but only if it's calcified drusen are you gonna see it. And we use that ultrasound to look for fluid in the sheath and you can watch that video. So OCT for papilledema, not so good for higher grades. Uh, you don't need it. For lower grades, might help. Grade two, it does help. Use the nerve fiber layer. Look ophthalmoscopically for obligatory signs. Look for the thickening of the nerve fiber layer. The drusen, hyporeflective core with hyperreflective rim. Make sure there's no subretinal fluid. Look at the Brooks membrane RPE opening, and please don't look at the FOMS.